Hey guys, welcome to The Lookup. I'm your host, Mason Ball. I have a fill-in producer today, Xander Harub. Thank you, Xander. Yeah, no problem. And uh, today we have a very special guest. He's a host of Almost Entirely Sports on 810 Sports Radio and a co-host of the Times Ours podcast and an upcoming Kansas City sports radio legend. I said it here, <laughs> Joshua Briscoe. How are you doing today? I feel great now. People sometimes people say that, you know, I'll give them the grand luscious intro that makes them realize how far they've come, the power they wield. It's nice to be on the other side of that for once. <laughs> yeah, uh, especially when you're, when you're doing the podcast with Seth Kaiser and how he has just 15 professions. <laughs> it's really it's really interesting. I'm just going to jump right into the questions here. So, this is kind of this might be kind of a long-winded one. I did the same thing with Stephen St. John, so First off, I'd like to ask, what compelled you to pursue a career in broadcasting? It's really like a need for attention, I think, a deep something deeply broken within me. I don't know. Um, I I never had like a moment of like, I'm going to do media or whatever. Um, I like I got a multimedia degree in college, which kind of means like nothing like not that it means nothing or I learned nothing, but it's so vague. Um, and I always loved radio and like, I rem- like, I remember listening to 810, you know, growing up. Um, and so that process was, it was always just something that I enjoyed and I listened to a ton of podcasts, uh, especially, you know, once like it, it felt like podcasts really hitting their stride whenever I was 13 or something like that. So then I just started always having a, an earbud in or whatever. And so then in college, I went in the multimedia program. And again, like, honestly, I would be lying if I was like, and I did it because I knew what I wanted. To, I I didn't, I just like the sort of spoken medium and kind of all the space that it has and the room for the little like rabbit trails and everything. And I just kind of kept working closer and closer to that. I, I did a bunch of media stuff in college at Mid-American Nazarene in, in Olathe. And then I got an internship at 810. And it became more and more clear that that was that that's my favorite form of media. I, I, I started figuring out that I wanted to do media, I guess, around college because I picked it then. Uh, and also it just seemed like fun. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, all right, here's a thing that I can do that I have fun doing. I'm going to do that instead of trying to do um, something smarter, like business management, right. <laughs> something that would have made money and been and would have been successful. Um but it's fun. So that's, that sucked me in. And now I'm still here and, uh, and very, very grateful for it. Yeah. And I'd say you've grown into that and you've been, you're very talented in that area of talking and, you know, having, being very presentable. Yeah. It's, it's a fun, it definitely is also a muscle that gets worked. Like that's something that, um, I don't want to like steal a future question, but sometimes like, Oh, what, what advice would you give them? It's like, well, I mean, you just have to do stuff. Like the, the more, if, if you heard the podcasts that I was making freshman year of college, um, you would not have projected great things for me. And you still might not, but you definitely wouldn't have then. Right. Okay. Yeah, like it, exactly what you said, not to steal your question. One of the next questions on my list was being a journalist or working in film is my goal in life. So in your position, what would you say to me or another high school kid like me that wants to be in your position? Yeah, I would say there are, there are like three, I think three distinct things. One is to do it and keep doing it and don't ever like just, you've got to push through your garbage and you will have garbage and that's part of the deal. So, so find your things and make your things and you might look back on this podcast in five years and go like, oh God, I would do all these things differently. And you should, because if you don't feel that way, you haven't grown at all. Um, so I think that's important. The other thing is to eventually try, you know, I get questions all the time about like, how can I get, you know, my podcast to grow or whatever. Find places that have an audience and then give them that content. And, and that's, right. that's what I started doing. Like I was doing Roughing the Kicker, which is a Chiefs podcast. Um, and I took it to uh, a guy at Arrowhead Addict, which is fan sided's chief site. I was like, Hey, I have this podcast. I think it's good enough. Um, and you have a, a chief's audience. Can I just put this on your site? 
people will find the show, you get free content. And now working like with the Sports Illustrated stuff that I'm doing, I understand now from that perspective a little more like, yeah, someone brought me a good podcast. It was like, hey, I'll do all the work and put it here. Would you would you do it? Would you put it up? Probably. Um, you know, lots of little qualifiers. Don't all DM me at once. But that that's a big thing. The other thing is just saying yes to as many opportunities as you can. And then the third thing is knowing when you can't say yes to another opportunity, because that's something that like that burnout is very, very real. Like you really do have a max capacity of stuff you can projects you can take on and stuff you can do. But I would always at least encourage people to push that. And then you will find in some valuable life lessons where you went too far or tried to do too much and ended up missing out on other stuff or whatever. Right. But that's that's sort of the conglomeration of I think three main things. I I like that answer because it's especially with you. You're 26, right? 25. 25. Okay. Yep. So you gave sort of a similar answer to Stephen St. John, and good. he's I'm on a good 47. path. 47. Yeah. So I feel I'm not like guess. I, I yeah I think that's what he said. He mentioned that a few times. So I think that's a very I I appreciate that. So. What is your opinion on the longevity of radio? And do you mm. think in the near future, AM radio will be replaced by podcasts and other mediums? Just Steven, this one, can I copy Steven's answer again? I, this... I, yes, you, okay. yes, I did ask. You okay, this. good. Um, there will always be audio only mediums. I, I, I guess media um, that I'm, very confident in because not just even by necessity because sometimes you're driving right like you can't always be watching something i would love to right. get the self-driving cars they're not here yet and i don't think uh even then like i think people like to listen to things i like to listen to things whenever i'm cooking or cleaning or eating or working or whatever so in that way like i think there will always be audio there will always be audio forms of media just like there's always going to be music, like not every song is going to have a music video. So I, I do think that will always exist. I do think also radio is going to have to continually evolve. And I think that you can find lots of examples just about everywhere of things that, that we, not being specifically 810, but we radio that we do well and things that we do poorly. I wouldn't want to have uh, music radios problems right now. Cause I don't, I don't think about that that often. So I, maybe they have ideas, but from a, a sports radio standpoint, it, it's always going to exist in some form. Our distinct challenge is making sure that, that we are in whatever form is currently working, which is why I push the podcast so hard. And right. there are, there are like little minute, there, there are things like, well, hold on. If you're giving this podcast away for free, but no one's listening to the ads, how are you paying the people? That's a big challenge that I don't have the answer to, but at least for where I'm at right now as a content creator first, the biggest thing for me is let's, you know, throw some ads in this podcast and let's make it accessible because if it's not accessible, people will never find it or never try right. to find it. So it needs to be, that's the thing I probably feel the most passionately about is you need to put the product in front of people, especially for like, for almost entirely sports. We're on, we're on weird hours sometimes right now. We, the show is from eight to 11 PM. I don't, I'm not telling you, you need to go sit in your car from eight to 11 to hear everything that I say. Right. I'll give it to you in the podcast and you can pop in an AirPod at 6 AM the next day at 9 AM the next day, whenever, and still get the show. And so that part I think is really important. And uh, there are a lot of challenges within it though, for sure. Yeah. I think it definitely helps you reach a larger audience because I wouldn't be listening to, I, I would listen to times ours, but there's no way I'd be listening to almost entirely sports unless yep. I was with my dad and the, just happened to be in the car yep. at night because, and I just listened to, you know, select hours during the day of your podcast on Spotify. So I think, yeah, yeah that, yeah. Um, what are some in and outs of radio that people do not think about? Oh, it's so, okay. It's a good question, but it's so open. I would say the biggest thing is that I, cause I never really thought about this that much until I was doing it. There is something deeply unnatural about sitting in a chair and knowing that with a few three minute breaks, four minute breaks, notwithstanding, you have to talk 
for right. three or four hours. And you can't have a minute of like, you know what? Let me think about that. Because eventually sirens start going off at the transmitter because you go, oh God, it went down. No, no, no. Josh was just thinking for 30 seconds. Yeah. No, then everyone's checking their phone. What happened to the podcast? You, you have to be constantly filling, constantly putting out sound, even as you're formulating it. And then eventually you try to hit that equilibrium of where it's just all kind of happening at once. And you, you can't be writing and then reciting. It's just this constant flow. Um, and you also like, I get distracted by lots of things. Like we have two screens yeah. up in the studio and, and one of them has just like ESPN on at all times. And for, for our show, one of them uh, has the, like the camera, the, in, the internal camera feed for the Facebook live feed for the show. Okay. I will, I will get distracted by myself on one screen or by ESPN on the other. And if I'm talking to a guest and I, and I miss it for a second, I'm, my goal is to listen as much as I can and, and, you know, have good follow-ups and all that stuff. But, but there is something really wild about like, all right, we've been doing this show for two hours and 45 minutes. It's 1045 and I have Rudy or maybe Rudy had to leave the room to go, you know, manage some other, hit some other button somewhere else. And so now I am alone in, in a room with a microphone that anyone could hear me on and I have yeah. to talk. Like, yeah. it, again, it goes back to it being a muscle that you, that you can work out, but it's really weird whenever you kind of break it down into its parts like that. Okay. Um, th yeah, I've always wondered that. And I have a question from my dad that kind of is in that same facet because yeah I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit so uh what is your schedule like because you have to most people don't plan around having something to do at night usually someone goes to work you know in the morning or early afternoon they don't start their main part of their day isn't at seven or eight o'clock like yours normally is yeah it it's I mean, it's always nuts. I mean, that, the answer is that it's it's crazy. Um, like I, you know, in the morning, I'll usually get up and work on Sports Illustrated stuff and try to schedule out the day that way, write something, edit something, be on some news or whatever. And then uh, headed into the studio, you know, early afternoon, most days with the pandemic going on, it's a little weirder still um, because I'm trying not to like be there hours. I don't have to be there and be another human body around a bunch of other people in an office or whatever right but like in, in slightly more normal circumstances it's get up do as much of the sports illustrated stuff as i can um and then kind of hand those responsibilities over to my deputy editor for the night then at night it's the show and then the show goes until 11 then i leave there 11 30 and i get home at midnight like that's that's the the rotation right now and it is weird because and then on sundays i'm, I'm doing the morning show for the most part um and so having like the one off day thing is not it, it, like it's it is a bizarre existence because we're also all everyone's working shorthanded right now, too. Right. Like everyone is kind of stretched out, especially thin. So I've got a, a messed up body clock because it's not easy to get home. It's not easy to do a three hour radio show and then get home and be like, all right, good night. Like that doesn't yeah. you've got energy up here because you've been up here for three hours and then you could drive home and listen to whatever you want, but it doesn't, you're not coming down the whole way. Um, and so then, you know, you play animal crossing for 30 minutes at midnight and then it's one 30 before you go to bed and you go, okay, well, this, this stinks. This alarm's going off way sooner than I want it to. And then you do it again the next day and you try to, and you try to make it to Saturday. That's you try to make it to Saturday and you sleep then and you do it again starting on Sunday morning. I'm not going to ask you to completely re-answer this question, but I want to get okay. this message in. So the only reason I'm doing this interview or have become a fan of you is because my dad, he is a huge 810 fan and also a fan of your podcast. So I let him get, let him give me a message to say to you. Excellent. And also a question to ask. He says, this is what he wants me to tell you. I'm a truck driver and I've literally gone weeks, if not months without changing the dial from 810 in my truck. I've, re I've referred to people who listen to the other station as terrible people. <laughs> <laughs> so his, uh, his question 
which I think we you kind of already delved into us a little bit, but I'll just it's more it's a little bit more of a statement I'd say. So, do you find it exhausting to talk that much for two or th- two and three hours a night, five days a week? Because I couldn't imagine just having to sit somewhere and talk about things and find things to talk about for that long, especially when there's not a lot going on. Yeah, it is. It's I would say it's more weird than exhausting. It can be exhausting. You get to the end of a week and you don't have a guest for a long stretch of time or whatever to kind of force yourself to talk to someone else or about something else or whatever. And especially when there's not much going on, like, you know, whenever to kind of to that point, like the, you know, there, there was not a tired moment the the, the Monday, whenever Mahomes signs half a billion dollar contract, because we right. got stuff to talk about, or even yeah. just like most, a, a good chunk of this last month, there's been so much going on, you know, like in the sports world, but not about sports. All all of the sort of cultural things that have been happening around there, those those shows were were easier is the wrong word, but th- those shows were never exhausting because there's an energy in what you want to say. I, I think I think the the time that it's that it is tiring or or whatever is whenever you are talking about something that you don't really care about, which is, and this is sort of a spinoff, but that's sort of the point of almost entirely sports to me. Like last night we talked about, um, I I guess uh, Thursday night, I don't know when the show comes out Thursday night. We we talked about briefly the, the skip Bayless tweet that was like, uh, LeBron would have no chance to beating Mike Tyson in a fight next on undisputed. (laughs) <laughs> that's what happens when you have to talk about sports for hours and hours and hours a day. And you've, you can't talk about Dak Prescott anymore. Like you eventually, mm-hmm. you eventually say LeBron couldn't beat Mike Tyson in a fight. It's like, what are we <laughs> like, what are we doing? And so for me, like when I would, I would have also Thursday, we talked to uh, Brian Bumgartner who plays Kevin in the office, weird, fun talk. That's with really him. cool. Um, yeah, it was great. And we ended up talking about the office for like 45 minutes around that last night. And it was never like, that was never exhausting because we're just having fun talking about the office and this new podcast he's doing and whatever. Uh, But whenever you find yourself trying to figure out like, all right, can I, can I squeeze another hour out of, uh, you know, the, major league baseball draft or whatever on like the like yeah. six days after it happened are we revisiting again i'd rather not i'd rather talk about animal crossing for 20 minutes yeah. Beca- and, and that's you know a lot of people have i think have a harder time because not not everyone listening to sports radio cares about the office a lot of a good portion does but um but that's part of it it's just like hey look i it's another reason the podcasts are great i think it's like hey man if you don't care about this this hour of game of thrones talk that that we would do uh, that's fine. You, there's a, there was an hour of chief stock right before that, you know, that you're more than welcome to just go listen to that instead. And we try to try to give a, I genuinely, I don't know if this always comes across. I genuinely do want to give people what they want and I'd want to give people options, but also if I think what you want at, you know, for three straight hours is Chris Jones talk, nothing new happened. I don't have anything new on Chris Jones. Yeah. I gave you all of my Chris Jones information and all of my opinions for the last six hours. Don't make me do it for a seven. You know what I mean? Like I don't. Yeah. And I think people can tell. I think people can tell whenever you're like, all right, so let's talk about Chris Jones again today. Like even if you're really good at it, kind of faking it. Eventually I think you can tell that someone's not that into it. Yeah. Especially with no sports. It's like, uh, you can tell people don't know what to talk about. I'm scrolling through my Instagram and ESPN's posting jersey swaps with LeBron and, yeah. and, a, and a Browns jersey. And it's like, well, why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, and that's the thing. Like, everyone, here, we're all in the same boat and we all want sports back. But when we, while we don't have them, like, this is for me also. And I'm guessing this is something that, that like, for this example, like your dad understands as well as anybody, anyone who listens to uh, a show or a station for literally months at a time, which I think is absolutely rad. But you you eventually, you know, like like uh, let's use the Border Patrol, right? With with Stephen and, and Nate and Jake, 
that show goes some weird places sometimes. No one, no one tunes in, like no one starts listening. I, I shouldn't say this because sometimes I do, but but not not everybody tunes in to figure out what weird thing is going to happen that day. But whenever you know, it's a funny word, no, but whenever you know and kind of trust the the person that you're listening to, whenever they go off on some tangent on something tangential, something weird, you follow them because you like them. Like th- right. there really is a like there is a relationship there where you know you you might tune in to hear about Patrick Mahomes, but if you're still there at 10 o'clock and we've got the 10 o'clock hour open with without something big and newsy to talk about, maybe you will care about the story about how someone broke into my girlfriend's car. She left that unlocked. It was kind of on her and tried to steal stuff, but literally couldn't find anything to steal because it was so messy that like she has a tire in her back seat. So someone was literally like went through her glove box and there was just nothing to take. She had like a pair of expensive shoes she'd gotten for free in the back seat, but they couldn't find it because underneath a pile of fast food <laughs> bags, like that that's not what you expected whenever you 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 tuned in. But if you've been around for me and the show, and um, like there are people who have recognized Renee, like out in the world, like wait, like right. that's that's crazy to to me. Um, but it's also like, that's people getting to know you. Like, and if, you know, if you meet, we're not really doing a lot of remotes right now for obvious reasons, but you know, whenever we're at, at training camp last year, people would come up to Steven constantly cause he's been here forever. Right. And, right. and you, and I, and I've had several people also do this, which has been also always extremely, extremely nice, but especially watching people come up to Steven, it's like, there is there's a connection immediately where, where he may have never met that person, but they introduce themselves as a friend because they've been in that relationship through the show with him for a decade, maybe. Um, I don't remember what your original question was, but I've been talking for a very long yeah, time. I don't, I, yeah, I don't either. We've gotten a long matter. way. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, if, if Joshua Briscoe started streaming animal crossing on twitch i might tune in you know right. like I, i'm a fan of you at this point i'm not a fan i'm a fan of the way you talk about things at this point i'm not a fan of the news you present if that makes sense yeah that makes a ton of sense actually that i wish i would have said that 20 minutes ago whenever i started answering that question <laughs> i'm gonna have i'm gonna have another one more like radio serious question i have some like silly things after that so Love it. you're not you're not a you don't shy away from being political and i know that most of it always connects to sports Mm because recently I I heard you talk about the Bubba Wallace NASCAR situation, the Washington name change and everything, and just other things within sports that do connect to Black Lives Matter and things like that. So I've heard, you know, in media, you know, especially if you're not presenting things that are political, you, people say, oh, stay don't divide your audience. Stay, mm-hmm. um, stay. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, neutral, at least in a, yeah, to an extent that you're neutral. not upsetting people, I guess. All right. So wh- what is, why, why do you feel the need to, and I, and I agree with this. I like that you do this, but why do you feel the need to stay on one side and, you know, talk about what you believe politically? Yeah. It's funny. Cause there definitely are things that like, I don't, I've never opened a show with like what I think is messed up about like American healthcare systems, right? Like there's a, th- there's like, there's, there is a section of it where it's like, I would be happy to, to talk about some of the like concerns that I have or whatever, but, but I don't, I try not, I don't go out of the way for it necessarily, but, but I think there are two main things. One is that, that politics are pop culture now in a, in a huge amount of, of things in a grand number of ways. And they certainly can't be politics have never been divided from sports. Like yeah. there, there have been historically collisions between the two and, and an intertwining between the two. So we talked about Kaepernick whenever Kaepernick was in the league, we're talking about black lives matter. We're talking about, you know, Hey, what's wrong with what Drew Brees said? What's what are, what are people getting wrong about, about kneeling during the national anthem? What, what is, what is, right. why don't we talk about police brutality whenever we're having these conversations, what statement should the chiefs make, you know, all that stuff. The bubble, the whole Bubba Wallace story. Whenever the president tweets about Colin Kaepernick or Bubba Wallace, I have to talk about the president 
on some level because he's inserting himself into a sports story. And so the the thing that, because this last month, I would say, has been the most I've I've been willing or comfortable, I guess, sort of stepping into the embracing that conversation more. I've always been interested in it. Like I'm, I'm uh, a political junkie is probably too much, but I'm, it's one, it's like a hobby to me at this point, honestly, because my, my original hobby is my job now. Um, so I'm like informed on all of this. And I, I was talking to someone else in sports media and, and was saying how much I appreciated them using their platform to, to use, to, to try to create some positive change and to stand up for what they think is right. And it ended up kind of getting to the point where we're talking about like, what is the point of having these platforms if we have an opportunity to do something positive with them and then choose right. not to. Right. And that's a really difficult challenge. And, and look, man, like there, there's a difference between like capital P politics and something, something being political and something being partisan. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not trying to come to, to the microphone and say like, this segment is only for Democrats. Like that would be really <laughs> stupid for a variety of reasons. It's also not what I want, right? Like I don't want that bubble that stinks. Yeah. But, but I do feel comfortable saying, Hey, in this segment, we believe the black lives do actually matter. And it's not that hard for you to say it. Like we, we do think that we need to, we, I, I want to help you think about this more smartly, which I think is in many ways, one of the biggest parts of my job, the way that I see it. I, I want to make sure you understand what's actually happening here, this Bubba Wallace story and why calling it a hoax is deeply irresponsible and factually incorrect. I, yeah. I want to, I want to talk about, Hey, we're going to, we're going to have Anthem mid Anthem protests during the next NFL season, Drew Brees said this thing. He had this apology. He had this apology. He had this apology. And this was bad, not great, not great, good. Let's follow the issues with that. Like, it, it's just also, it's also intertwined. And, and in, in a way that I think you would have to try very hard to avoid it at this point. And I have no interest in doing that. The, the one other yeah. thing is I, I, this might sound totally like a, totally corny, but I genuinely try to, it's hard sometimes. I try to have faith in the audience, okay. meaning that I, tr I try to trust that whenever I say what my mindset is, my, my line of thinking, I, I don't, I don't have to come up like I'm trying to calm down a horse and go like, Hey, I'm not saying that if you have any of beliefs over here, that if you're economically conservative, you're a bad person. I'm not saying that. Like, I, I think that, I think that, that people are generally smart enough to, to know like, Hey, I'm talking about racism and racists and the Confederate flag right here. Cause this is all in sports and this isn't me coded, this isn't coded language for me actually talking about you, unless you have issues with these three things. And I think for the most part that tracks, I mean, they, you know, and we'll get texts on the text line that just like call me a communist and that's fine. Like, you know, it, yeah. I, you know, that that's going to happen. I'm, I'm not here for, I'm not going to get a hundred percent hit percentage. Also, those people don't like my sports opinions already. I don't know why, but um it, it really is a give and take of like, I, I try to have as much as humanly possible, like honest, good faith conversations where I, I don't even, I'm not even trying to be on a soapbox. Like I'm just trying to say, Hey, here's what I think I can do with my platform right now that you should also be thinking about. And, and frankly, I would say for the most part, there've been pretty good results. Like, you know, you'll lose Twitter followers and that doesn't keep me up at night nearly as much as it might seem. Um, because I think that, even people who might take issue with with some parts of where I end up, if they are trying to to have a truthful conversation at all, they will they will stick around for the more difficult parts of it. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think the way you use your platform is really interesting. With you having to talk to people a lot of the time, because it's not like the only way a lot of people use their platform. A lot of people. A, a lot of the ways pe people are 
can only really use their platform is like giving a donation link or something, but you're actually able to like make have nuanced conversations and yeah. you can inform people. You've informed me a lot. So I think that's really valuable for sure. Yeah. And I appreciate that because also sometimes it feels like I say things that I try to have a nuanced conversation and then three people yell at me. I mute three people on Twitter. We move on with our day, but like it, it is, it is, there is something to that. I think of, of um, feeling like you can help inform people in a way that can help other people then enact change for themselves as well as you're also trying to enact change from yourself. So okay, it's complex, I'm just gonna, it's good. Yeah, I'm going to completely 180. I love it. That. I love it. I love that's an awkward the, segue. That's the most the serious it will probably get. So good. Personally, myself, I'd love to be a meme. I've been striving for that for a long time. <laughs> but you did this effortlessly. It's so funny. You have, I'll put it on the screen for anyone that's watching. You have a photo <laughs> of you trying to sneak a picture of Anthony Sherman walking into training camp. Yeah. Can you take me through that moment? Because that picture is hilarious, and I love the edits people made. Yeah, I can take you through the process. I was at training camp and Anthony Sherman walked by and, a, and like a leotard. It's like, oh, I'm taking pictures of him. That, 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 <laughs> that. And then the next day, it's on the front page of the sports section of the Kansas City Star. There was no <laughs> moment there. I wasn't like, oh, this will, I'm going to, like, I was yeah. just, I was just taking pictures to <laughs> put on the 810 social media accounts. And, uh, and, and the, the one frame that the star <laughs> photographer got that ended up on the front page of the sports section that day is, is me leaning outside of the crowd in a big like black 810 shirt that just sticks right out just kind of sneakily looking like I'm taking a picture of Anthony Sherman's butt which was not my intention but I do I mean I did take a picture of his butt it wasn't again on purpose it was just like I was trying to get pictures of his whole outfit yeah and uh yeah then I became a meme it was uh yeah it's weird it's weird it's not like it's not like an international meme which I'm you know grateful for I think but uh certainly a Kansas City one extremely strange not on purpose yeah. Well, what I was, that was, this is just so funny. I, I love that picture. I, I, I always go to your Twitter just to look for it. <laughs> so, funny. Uh, so, so while researching for this podcast, I found on Arrowhead Addict, your most recent column was named why Bob Sutton will probably be fired after the season. I'm just going to point out that that aged very 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 well thank you i got terrified yeah. when you said your last column at arrowhead addict because i don't even remember when that would have been yeah that was it was that and i think there were, there was another one where you just nailed it right on the head it was one of them i'll take so patrick Mahomes is obviously amazing game-changing quarterback so say you had to trade a certain amount of the chiefs team for him and like say you had to trade X amount of players, where do you draw the line? Where are you like, okay, uh, we can get another quarterback, but we can't lose Tyron Matthew, Chris Jones, Frank Clark, Tyree Kill. Where do you think, do you, would you, would you draw a line or would you just build a team around him? If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I would like, I would offer like first round picks for his entire career to any team. Like, all right, as long as he's with us, you have our first round picks. Like that, I would do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like, if you think about, it, like, in the, in, even in the specifics of, like, the salary cap that we're dealing with, you know, that we're all kind of talking about a little bit right now, I, it, I, I, my answer, I, giving you a very specific, like, number of players or amount of money off the top of my head, I probably can't do. It would be absurd, right. though, because, like, the, the biggest single advantage in, in the biggest, like, cheat code in all of, of football is to have a quarterback on a rookie contract who way outperforms it. The second biggest advantage is to have a quarterback on a big contract who is outperforming it. And I think he's going to do that for anything. So like, yeah, I mean, I love Chris Jones. I love Tyron Matthew. You could Frank Clark. I, you could, you could throw, you could rebuild an entire defense with free agents right now. If that's what it took to, uh, to keep Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, I have four quick questions okay. here and to, round this out so two really quick here would you rather be friends with a Raiders fan or a Broncos fan close close friend relationship um I guess Broncos fan I'm at this point I'm pretty I'm pretty Raiders fans are more obnoxious I think in general 
that also just might be like that one kid on Twitter that is always talking about how good Derek Carr is. I, right. I think I'm actually just saying I'd rather have Drew Locke than Derek Carr. I think it's actually what my answer is, and and, and that's that's fine. I, I typically get along with with everybody fine though. But I would say Broncos. I guess I would have I'm said sure. I would have said Raiders when I was younger though. Right. I'm sure you'll have the same answer for this, but this one is: Would you rather date a Raiders fan or a Broncos fan? <laughs> I love the continued implications of this one. I love the, like, I love how full well, it's like, let's, let's really think about it. Um, like short-term relationship, long-term relationship, short. Uh, I, that's, this is important. That's an important clarify. Yeah, right. Is this um, like, we're, we're going on like, we're going on like uh, three dates in college or like, we're trying to settle down. I think you're, if you're trying to settle down, <laughs> Three, three, three dates, you know, let's see, let's see, let's, let's go grab a drink and let's see what, let's see where, uh, where we go with Raiders fan, uh, settle down Broncos fan. I don't know what okay. my logic is there, but I believe in that strongly yeah. for some reason. Yeah. I don't know if I could handle someone talking about John Elway. Oh, that's a good, it's such a good point. Know. It's such a good point. But here's the other thing. What you're, you're sitting at the movie theater, you go, you're going to go ahead and put your arm around your, your, your date. And then what's that okay. shoulder spikes? No, I, <laughs> take those off. It's, there's, there's drawbacks all over the place. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I couldn't come up with an answer for that myself. So uh, yeah. are, do you, do you current, I'm going to put you on the spot. Are you currently in a relationship okay. with anyone? No. So you're dating a Chargers fan. Because they have none. They have because they That's have no good. fans. That's good. That's I would good. walk off right now if I was wearing pants. That that was great. If you were wearing pants, I was wearing pants. <laughs> okay. Do you like Doritos or Cheetos more? Uh, Cheetos. I think Doritos. I think Doritos are a little bit overrated. I don't. The I, I like. There's like a buffalo chicken Dorito that is pretty good. Like a buffalo ranch Dorito. I guess chicken would be wild. Um, yeah. But uh, jalapeno. Or flame and hot Cheetos. I prefer both of those. Okay. Okay. But so, also regular ones. I would say Cheetos over Doritos. Also, for this last one, I have a wheel that has all thirty-two NFL teams on it. So okay. I'm going to try to put your your sports knowledge to the test a little bit. Oh so God. Okay. I I I don't I don't know if you'll be able to see the wheel, but you know, there's sound, and I'll tell you. So it's thirty. There's thirty-two teams on this wheel. Yes. I want you to try to name 10 players from whichever team gets picked. 10? Okay. I, it depends. Yeah. I'll tell you what. There are some teams I'll get and there are some teams I will not. Yeah. I, I, I'm i sure. Yeah. So 10, 10 players. If it's the Chiefs, I'll respin because. No, I think it was the Chiefs. Sure I can, think it's if the Chiefs. It means I did a good interview. I'm sure. You, yeah, that's true. This is true. If it, It's fate if the Chiefs come if up. If it's and the Titans, I'm bleeped. I just want you to know I'm bleeped if it's the Titans. Okay. Okay. I'm spinning. I can hear it. it. It's pretty good. <laughs> this sucks. I hate this. I don't like this feeling. It is the oh, 49ers. Oh, okay. Sure. Oh, yeah, we played it. Yeah. I, yeah, we we just had this. I think I, I think I can do this. If I get one right. someone that's not on the roster, do I do it I immediately lose? No, I mean free agency, it, things can get complicated. It's not really. Okay, so uh Jimmy Garoppolo got one. Raheem Mostert got two. I think Jared McKinnon is still is still there. Um, just got injured. I think Matt Bre- uh, Breda is still there, but he was definitely on the Super Bowl roster. They, just, they were just hurt. Um, they traded uh, DeForest Buckner, but he was there. Yes. Uh, Eric Armstead is still there. Yes. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders was there for the Super Bowl, but isn't anymore. Mm-hmm. But that feels like that feels pretty good. Uh, George Kittle is obviously still there. Um, I've probably missed some. Uh, Richard Sherman and. Yeah. I just need like a, I need one lineman or to remember who the back, hold on, hold on is, is, oh God. There's a, there's a pretty popular one that I'm thinking of that I'm sure you, uh, I'm sure you know. I'm yeah, but, I'm probably, no, that's fine. I'm probably going to, and now I'm trying to remember if I can remember the name of the backup quarterback who played a little bit. Um, dang it. Uh, I don't think I have it. Okay. I'm leaving. I'm leaving the quarterback department. Um, okay. I've missed a very popular player. I think so. I, I, I may have just missed it while you were going through. Probably not. I probably just missed it. Give me, give me a hint. He, he plays defense and has a brother that plays in the NFL. This is bad. I got to nine so confidently. 
Yeah, yeah, you were you were killing it. I'm sure this one. I'm they sure also who did they here. draft? They also drafted. They also drafted somebody in the with that pick they got for Buckner. Damn it. Yeah, I, who has I, a brother? Who? No, okay, you have to tell me who that. Who I'm totally blanking. Uh, on. I, I'm sure. I'm sure you'll be like, oh, Nick Bosa. God dang it! Yeah, I went across <laughs> yeah. the whole defensive line. I left yeah, out the best yeah, exactly. one. That sucks. All right, there's okay. ten. I hate this. This game stinks. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, that that's the end of my questions. So I appreciate you coming on. Who did Steven get? Who did Steven get on the wheel? I I, I did not do this with Steven. You, I wrote, I, you little twerp. <laughs> How dare you? I wrote I wrote this interview first, and I was just I had this on here, but I never didn't never uh, change. I never put it on Steven's. <laughs> I forgot about Nick Bosa. You're not yeah. welcome. Delete this interview. <laughs> I should hang up. Uh, <laughs> I, I I appreciate you talking for another forty minutes of your day. Absolutely. I, thank you so much for coming on. We're uh, I think this is just gonna turn into the eight ten sports radio interview. I think show that's fun. Hour. Just give so. everybody the damn wheel. Except if you get Petro Juan, he'll do. He'll give you three hundred and twenty players. He'll just go ten mm-hmm. for each team. He'll give me. He'll give me the whole. Uh, he'll give me the injured reserve too, and the whole. Yeah. Roster. Hey, hey, sir, I'm gonna spin this wheel. I need you to tell me ten players from their roster in 1974, even if the team didn't <laughs> exist yet. Cool. What? <laughs> okay, man. I appreciate it. Thank Absolutely. You, uh... All right. Nick Bosa. Stupid. <laughs>